As you can see in my channel, I've been trying many film and dryers lately, and most of them are doing their job as they are supposed to be doing it. And now the race has become who offers that little difference that makes it worth to buy one versus the other, because they are getting so similar that there is very little between them. So today I have a new film and dryer, the Grat Kit film and dryer, and we're gonna see what are those differences or what are the special things that this device has to entice you as a buyer to go and get one of these boxes. Come with me and let's see. As we've been seeing in the other reviews, the film and dryer boxes have basically two functions. Number one is to dry the filament that you put inside so you can use it with your printer and get the best results that you can on the prints. And number two is to act as a spool holder so you can at the same time that you're drying the filament, you can still roll and feed film into your printer. This is important because many filaments uh, can get humid just while waiting or while printing. So the filament dryer as a spool holder is very important for me, especially when you're using something like nylon or some kind of PA13 or something like that. In the past, the filament dryer, the first ones that came out, they only had a heating element at the bottom of the dryer. This had a little bit of a problem that was uh, the area of the roll that was closer to that filament was getting hotter or drier than the rest of the spool. Then the dryers in general started to work around this either by adding uh, heating elements in other areas or by adding a fan that could move that heat uh, and that warm air inside the chamber so you could dry the whole filament in a better way. In the case of the Grad Kit filament dryer box, they have the, the heating element at the bottom and they have a fan at the bottom too, which is moving the hot air inside that chamber. The dryer box is doing their main job, drying the filament, as expected. I have put many hours of test here especially working with my TPU, which is the filament that I normally use the most in my shop. And it's also one of the filaments that needs to be dried before printing. My prints are coming perfectly fine. When you have a TPU that is dry, you get very little stringy and you can see the results very easily because the clean parts are coming out from your printer very, very nicely. In some dryers, we have this cost effect that the box itself didn't have a place where the humidity could go out of the box. And this created a bit of, of a problem because even though you were drying the filament, the humidity will stay in and will come back to the filament. In the case of the grad kit, we have a hole at the back, which seems to be there specifically for this, of letting the humidity go out. But I'm not 100% sure because there is nothing on the manual or the website or anything indicating that this hole is for that. Then we come to the second part of drying the filament, which is what is the range of temperature that this device can get. And as expected, again, everything in the market is getting to the same place and this filament can go up to 70 Celsius, which is going to give you enough to dry most of the hobbyist filaments that are out there. So in that sense, it's doing its job, nothing special, nothing bad in this aspect. But then we come to my first but. We have a nice screen in the front of the device which is showing us filament names or filament profiles. And it gives you the idea that you can just sweep or you can just change the filament type with some kind of, with the UI. And then you don't have to remember what's the temperature that I need to dry nylon or to dry TPU or to dry anything, which is, I appreciate it and I think pretty, uh, pretty good and what you would expect these days. The problem here or my big bot here is that the UI is simply terrible. I spent around 15 minutes trying to figure out how to move from one profile to the other. I was clicking everything, holding, double clicking and doing everything that I could imagine or that you are used to because you have many other electronic devices with some kind of UI, right? 
but I couldn't figure it out so I needed to go to the manual which by the way how many of us are still reading manuals or even keep them around to be able to look for these kind of things so but anyway I went to the manual I read the instructions and then I tried to follow it I didn't work the first time actually the second time kind of worked it was at the third time why reading the manual that I could understand how this UI work um, for me that's a big big uh, red flag here right I mean these are very simple devices they just dry your filament why are you gonna do such a complicated UI I don't have an idea but at the same time I have to say once you know how it works well it just works you don't really need to do anything else and as long as you remember how it was it you're gonna get to the right profile which is nice and you're gonna dry your, your filament which is what you want to do with this device in theory the big selling point of this dryer box is the fact that it has an app these days everything has an app right and they the the the, the people producing this box said most probably why won't we have an app that should be the way to go and the ad is just another interface for the device and being the main interface as bad as I was describing I thought well maybe they put more effort on the uh, on the on the phone app and it's maybe nicer and easier to control the device through that app but I was wrong again uh, I mean the person or the group that work on the main UI should have been working on the UI for the app as well because it's not good either like it's difficult to find things that you want to do and like uh, from a graphical point of view is it's actually difficult to understand but anyway since it was the selling point of the device I needed to use it and I needed to see what if it actually gives you something extra so I could evaluate it the I used the app for two or three days uh, to see you know to set the temperature to monitor what was happening and in all honesty I don't see a reason why you need an app for a, a filament dryer box I mean when you are going to use these boxes with your printer you normally have to be close to the printer to you know feed the filament or maybe open the 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 encasing of the printer because you're going to print one filament that requires the doors open or closed and so on and what the the filament dryer needs to do is just to dry the filament which you set the type set the temperature set the time that is going to be drying and then you forget about it so why would you remotely set the temperature and then run to the printer to open the doors or to feed the, the filament or to change the filament and then go again remote and do something on the app doesn't make a lot of sense to me again if the if the interface on the phone was much nicer and much more intuitive than the one that is in front of the device i would say yes don't touch the device and just take your phone and control everything even if you are very close to the device right but it's not the case so I don't really see a point for this app in, in these kind of devices anyway. Moving to the second job of the box, which is uh, being a spool holder. Here I have to say that GradKit did something that I'm liking. Let's start by this. You have rods, as many other filament dryers have. And when you're using the rods, you just put your filament spool on top of it and the thing rolls, right? But what GradKit is doing, which I appreciate, is the fact that they include an extra way to have your filament which is hanging here in the middle with this little plastic part that means that the roll it's going to be hanging from the center and it's going to roll just there i don't think that's the the best way i, I mean the rods for me are are better than hanging but the thing is that sometimes the spool itself is damaged on the edges or it has some kind of problem and it doesn't roll nicely and that can like hold your filament or create a lot of stress on the filament or or just be uh, annoying and not rolling the right way and in that case it's good to have this way to hang the spool 
because then you can avoid having those problems. But even though I like the fact that you have these two ways in one, this kind of hybrid system in one box, which I think it was pretty smart in a very simple way from their side, I have to complain again about the exit point for the filament in this box. In the box, you have only one exit point. And if you look at it, it's in a place where it's not tangent to the size or to a regular row which means that even if you have the, the PTFE tube in the hole, you're gonna create certain angle where the filament is gonna come in and try to go out. That angle is gonna create friction when you are printing. In most of the cases, that kind of thing is not gonna bother you that much. If you're printing PLA, you wouldn't even think about it. If you're printing TPU, you won't think about it. But if you're printing some other filaments which are a bit more difficult to print, you might feel the difference. And again, the fact that you only have one exit point, when everyone else has at least two, three exit points in different angles, in different places, so you can adapt your box to your printer, it's a minus in my head for this. In fact, when, when I started to print, I thought that that hole that I mentioned in the beginning, which was for the humidity, that I thought that was in a position that was much better to, 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 as an exit point for the filament than the real exit point. And I printed using the, the humidity hole as my, my exit point many times, and I had a better result than if I had used the intentional exit point that they have in this box. So that's another thing to think about when you are choosing this box. At this point, the only thing left to say about this filament box is the price. How much are you willing to pay for this? Well, the filament box goes for 89 US dollars in their uh, manufacturer's site. For me, that's a bit of a steep price if you compare, for example, with the other boxes that I have review on this channel like the Sun Louis 2 goes for $69.99 which is still I think a high price for the function or for the quality of the dryer. If you think about the fixed dry that I talked about in the other video goes for $59.99 we're talking about $30 cheaper than this one. To close this video, I have to say, yeah, the UI is terrible on this device, but actually once you use it or once you learn to use it, you don't have to think much more about it. The app is nothing that I will be using or promoting, but no one is forcing you to use the app. It's just an option there. And the box does its jobs as it has to do it, or at what is the intention, which is drying. That, that part, it's very good. So again, I have shown you a few different dryers. It's up to you which one is more valuable for you, which one works better for your setup. Uh, you have all the options there and hopefully I'm giving you enough information so you can do a educated purchase of your filament dryer box. Thank you for watching and see you soon.